Hello again, and thank you for watching. I would like to thank some of the subscribers who emailed me and messaged me in my Instagram and Facebook Messenger and asked me if I can talk about the latest issue with regard to the side effect of COVID-19 vaccine, specifically the mRNA vaccines made by Pfizer with regard to myocarditis. So far, what I'm going to do today is to give you an update of what is happening now with regard to myocarditis after COVID-19 vaccination. Watch this. So if you like my videos, please continue to support. Please click like, subscribe, including the notification bell so that you will be updated for any new uploaded videos to come. Last May 10, 2021, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration finally granted the emergency use authorization for a specific vaccine the Pfizer mRNA vaccine to be given to children 12 to 15 years of age. This much-awaited uh, decision actually put the likelihood that schools in the United States will finally fully reopen. However, recently, doctors at Oregon Health and Science University recently described seven cases in teens, all boys, who developed heart inflammation after four days of getting the second dose of Pfizer vaccine. This study was published in the Journal of Pediatrics. And what we found out was all the in individuals who got the myocarditis were boys, hospitalized, and treated with anti-inflammatory medications, including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and steroids. What's important is most of these recipients of the vaccine who got myocarditis were discharged within a few days and all recovered from their symptoms. So what is myocarditis? Simply put, myocarditis is plain and simple inflammation or swelling of the heart. Yes, it appears to be a side effect of the vaccine, but it is very rare and usually affects young people after the vaccination of COVID-19, specifically the mRNA Pfizer vaccine. We all know that there are two mRNA vaccines that were given emergency use authorization, which is the Pfizer and the Moderna. However, the only vaccines currently authorized for use in adolescents are made by Pfizer. Because the Pfizer vaccine was authorized for use as young as um, 12 last month, just last month in May, there's not yet enough data to draw conclusions about the risk of myocarditis in kids between ages 12 to 15. If you look at the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, or the VAERS, which is a database of health problems reported after vaccination, this is a very important reporting system because it is open to anyone and has the benefits, however, and limitations. But this VAERS gives the CDC and the FDA the ability to rapidly detect any adverse events, something that's beyond the power of even a large clinical trial. The problem is it is observational so that there's no way for us to know if the problems that are reported in this system were really caused by the vaccines or purely coincidence. And it is for this reason that CDC is actively investigating and confirming each report they get. What we know is that out of the more than 12 million doses already administered to youths between ages 16 to 24, the CDC so far has 275 reports of heart inflammation following vaccination in this age group. The CDC has analyzed so far a total of 475 cases 
of myocarditis after vaccination in people under the age of 30 that were reported in the system. What we know so far is that the side effect seems to be more common in teen boys and young men than in older adults or than in women and may occur in 16 cases for every 1 million people. But note, they usually occur after the second dose. What's also very important based on data is the number of events above the so-called background rate which means the cases that could be expected in this age group without the vaccination. So, so far, what we know is that young age groups have only received about 9% of the total doses of the vaccine so far, but they already represent about 50% of the myocarditis cases reported after vaccination. So there's really a true imbalance of events meaning the number of events in this age group appears to be above the rate that would be expected for these age groups without the vaccines in the picture. What's also very interesting is that the number of events reported in the United States after Pfizer vaccination are in line with similar adverse events seen in young people in Israel. Remember, Israel is one of the most uh, heavily vaccinated country and Pfizer was actually heavily used in Israel. The Israel health regulator said that a small number of myocarditis were seen mainly among men ages 16 to 30. The country saw 275 cases of myocarditis from December 2020 to May of 2021 among more than 5 million vaccinated people. So this is roughly an incidence of myocarditis of about 50 cases per 1 million for men ages 18 to 30. Now, what is important is that if you look at the clinical scenario of those who were admitted for myocarditis, most of the patients spent no more than four days in the hospital and that 95% of cases were classified as mild. However, the association appeared to be strongest among men ages 16 to 19 and was more common after the second dose. So a lot of my friends who have kids in the United States already are trying to delay the second dose of Pfizer vaccination until this causal link for children is resolved. Now, what are the telltale signs of myocarditis? Usually, it typically occurs around four days after the second dose. Patients usually tell you about chest pain, shortness of breath, and fever. Now, most of the young adults, however, who experience myocarditis, again, recovered quickly, although so far in the United States, three needed intensive care and rehabilitation after this episode. But of note, in the U.S., among the cases with known outcomes, 81% got better and 19% still have ongoing symptoms. So definitely everyone agrees that more studies are needed to determine if there's really a causal link between myocarditis and the mRNA Pfizer vaccine. In fact, the CTC has scheduled an emergency met meeting, I think, anytime next week to convene an expert panel on immunization practices to further review the events. The American Heart Association, the leading heart organization in the United States and in the world, has the following statement that the benefits of COVID-19 vaccination continues to be enormously beneficial and outweigh the rare possible risk of heart-related complications. Uh, the evidence continues to indicate that COVID-19 vaccines are nearly 100% effective in preventing death and hospitalization due to COVID-19 infection. That although the investigation of cases of myocarditis related to COVID-19 is ongoing, uh, it is yet to be determined if these cases have any correlation to receiving the COVID-19 vaccination, and therefore all healthcare providers should be aware of the very rare adverse events that could be related to COVID-19 vaccine. 
So in closing, a causal relationship between vaccination and myocarditis has at present not been established, but the temporal association of these cases with vaccination as well as a striking similarity in the clinical and laboratory parameters and presentations raise the possibility for such a relationship. So we'll stay tuned with the emergency meeting of the CDC next week. Further investigation of possible causal link um, uh, several factors suggest one, including the consistent timing of the development of symptoms, which indicates a uniform biological process, similarities in clinical findings and laboratory presentations point to a very important common etiology. And the fact that these cases occurred when other common respiratory viruses known to be tied to myocarditis aren't circulating widely. So it is therefore very critical that we can't emphasize again to everyone that the benefits of vaccination continue to outweigh the risk at this point. With over 4 million COVID-19 cases diagnosed in children under 18 in the United States, that resulted in over 15,000 hospitalization and between 300 to 600 deaths among children. Therefore, we can clearly say here that the benefits of vaccination in this population continue to far exceed the risk of their adverse event. Again, this is Dr. Jerry Tan. Thanks again for listening. Feel free to message me for any topics you want me to discuss in my future video. With that, thank you very much.